Well, hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to Daydream Manor Flower Farm. I'm Dawn, and I live in South Louisiana, and I got a mess out here in the flower field. So we're going to start the video like this today. All right, so I am out in the flower field, and oh, man, I'm going to tell you what. Mother Nature is up, mm, okay? Anyway, yesterday we had some weather come through. I'm filming this a couple of days earlier than I normally do during the week just because I got a full week um, this week with my off-farm job. So I wanted to make sure I got this in, but perfect timing. Yesterday it was yuck. It was rainy all day um, and the wind was gusting. Now, interesting enough, when we looked on um, our uh, thermometer thing, it captured winds going at... Um, I think the highest gust was like 23 miles per hour. That's a lot. Um, and so the frost cloth situation, what we're trying to work through to get a better system out here, didn't work. So we've got to go back and figure that out. But I just thought I'd show y'all what we're dealing with. Um, and talk about just having to switch gears again. Farming is just such, it's one big experiment. And if you're not willing to fail and learn from that, you're gonna, have a, you're gonna struggle. So um, this is a fail. So Mr. Daydream had put the hoops up because we were, let me back up for a minute. So the, the point was we were trying to work smarter, not harder. And we wanted to be able to leave the frost cloths up um, and the hoops up during the entire winter so that um, if we were going to get a unexpected freeze, you know, get into the low 20s, we wouldn't have to be out here at night when we get home from work trying to get this up and done. So we did the hoops. The hoops are fine. Well, in some situations, there's one man down, man down. Um, and we were using some clips to hold it on. He's got some things wired in. And those winds yesterday just... Pfft, just ripped it all apart so we've got some damage here so we're going to go back to the drawing board and rework i'm about to pull them all down anyway because here we are um the first of february and i think i'm overdressed i think i go back inside change clothes um i think it's probably close to 65 degrees right now so who knows but it did tear up all of them the good news is that the flowers themselves are fine um there wasn't there wasn't any damage this is the ranunculus here so had something come through and eat on them um a while back but nothing that we can't handle so mr daydream's going to work out here in the field and i am going to go inside um into the stem shed and i'm going to pot up the lisianthus and we'll continue that talk there all right i'm in the stem shed and i've changed clothes and I started doing this, and I've just been talking away to you all, and I never pushed record. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's start this over. Welcome into the STEM shed. Change clothes. It's now 70 degrees outside. Y'all, that field is a mess, but you know what? It could have been so much worse, and we were trying you know we're trying to put in systems here so that we're working smarter not harder and one of the things we really wanted to try to figure out is how can we keep our hoops and the frost cloth up all winter long because it never fails I, when there comes like a hard frost where i'm gonna have to cover when it gets down really cold it's at night it never happens and it never happens on the weekends of course and so trying to be a little bit more proactive um, they have been holding up. They've been up for a while, but that wind, y'all, those gusts were up to 23 miles an hour and it just, it tore some of them. Um, clips flew all around, but look, I'm letting Mr. Daydream figure it out. He is determined he's going to figure it out. So, um, I, there's gotta be a way. And if anybody's going to figure it out, it's going to be him. So I'm letting him handle that. Uh, all right, here's what's on tap today. I've got to get the eucalyptus potted up. As you can see, I started because I thought we were already chatting. Uh, this eucalyptus is Silver Drop, and I started it uh, at the end of December, so it's on about five weeks in the soil block. I need to get them out of there. Plus, the soil blocks are starting to look really wonky. So, um, I decided I am going to start, I'm going to pop them up into the Bootstrap Farmer Air Prune Tray. Y'all, that's not not sponsored but i do I, and i do have a video when i bought some things and this was one of them if you want to go learn more about it you can see my um 
you can look for my other video about the unboxing. Um, I just figured that I need to give these eucalyptus a better chance than I gave them last year. Last year, I had just potted them straight up into a regular cell tray. Uh, wasn't real happy. Y'all know I ended up with six, uh, six or eight that went out into the field. So um, I really want to fill the high tunnel. I really want a whole row um, in the high tunnel. I want an entire bed of just eucalyptus. So we're going to try this. Um, somebody had asked me before in my other video, why did I not just pot them up to the larger soil block? Um, I, I just didn't really want to make another round of soil blocks. And so I am going to use, I'm going to try this and see how this works. So I have these little handy tools. We've talked about them before. I got them in something that I had ordered off of the, the Zon. And it just, they, they make a great little thing to come in and make just make a little divot in the soil. Um, I am potting these up in my mixture where I use um, peat, vermiculite, perlite, um, bone meal, blood meal, and green sand. So that's the mixture these are. I've changed this up a little bit. Um, so we're, we're going to see how they do. Anyway, um, because I really, I really want to, I'm really trying to give this a good go. This whole, um, look, there's two of these together. Um, no one else in my area is growing eucalyptus in this kind of quantity. The ones that were out in the field this year, I think they did the best because there was a drought. Um, and they didn't get watered a lot, but, and, and they, look, they really just took off. So, I'm, and I'm not, I don't know if I'm going to even move them out of that perennial bed and put them in the high tunnel. So, I feel like if I'm going to try to mimic that environment again, the best place to do it is in the high tunnel. So, I am getting these potted up. Um, they are going to be in here. Y'all, I think they'll probably be in here another four weeks at least. I mean, I, I know I won't. I won't even probably plant them. It's probably going to be longer than that now that I'm thinking about it. Because I probably won't even put these out into the field until, into the high tunnel, until like the end of March, 1st of April. I'm thinking that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I am going to go back and look and see when I put those other ones into the uh, perennial box. But we shall see. Um, what else? Oh, have not done anything with the lilies. Surprise. Um, my off-form job is kicking my rear end. Uh, so I'm trying to, I got a lot, I just got a lot going on and I'm trying to get it, like making sure I'm a lot in my time the way I need to. Um, yesterday was just such a bust with the yucky weather and I didn't come out here. I probably could have locked myself in the sim shed and done some stuff, but I did take advantage of the rainy day to work on my, work some stuff on my website, do some stuff for the boutique. Um, so I, 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 I didn't just do nothing. <laughs> I did do some work, but this is some of the stuff that just needs to be done. Um, that I have not done. Uh, what else? Oh, I, Oh, I started my um, squash and my zucchini. I'm like excited. Um, trying to get that in the ground. Mr. Daydream's going to do some raised beds over where we do our vegetables. I think that's the way we're going to go. So those are started. That's what you can see behind me. Um, some of those are started. My peppers are started. What else? Uh, tomatoes. All the fun veggies. So... Yeah, it's just always one thing. I, this let me let me rephrase that. So this morning when I was eating, I was like, let me get let me let me get let me get a list going here. Now well, that list just never ends. But I am a list maker, so it just is always something. Um, but that's all a part of trying to juggle the farm, my job, life. Um, I just told Mr. Daydream the other day I have not seen my grand girls in like three weeks. I mean, I talked to them, but. Um, maybe it's even been longer than that because they, they had a vacation, they went on, then they had the flu and it's like, okay, I'm missing them. So I've got to find some time over the next, over the next weekend or next couple of weekends so I can get them. Um, you know, it's just, it's just about life and it's about knowing what you want to do, what you don't want to do. I met with um, my flower farming friends uh, the other morning for coffee. And two of us 
are such on the same page because we've we we are like we know what we're not doing right and i've talked to y'all about this before right like i am not going to sit at a farmer's market all day like i'm not doing farmer's markets um you know and so now i think i'm at a point on the farm where i really want to hone in and perfect what i am doing and what is the next stretch goal for me so um i think it's going to be exciting this year with all the flowers going into the boutique so that's going to be awesome uh, the subscriptions um there's something else i'm kind of trying to work on um and i'll let y'all know pretty soon in the next couple of videos what that is uh, i just got to get some things hammered out but um i'm really now kind of shifting after five and a half years five years six years whatever it's been um, since 2019, five years. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm really now just starting to, to think about what long-term does the farm really look like and what I want to be working on when I retire. Because um, this is the retirement for me. And like a lot of you who are watching um, who may already be retired or um, planning to retire, you know, I think that's the beauty too of farming over 50 is we do bring a lot of experience um, just life experience in general and I think I think too at this age I I can identify very quickly what I want to do and what I don't want to do and so um, now this year is really about just honing in and getting to a place where I can say these are the four things or whatever that I want to do on the farm. So, um, I am not, <laughs> I am not trying to supplement the income that I make now from my off-farm job, period. I want it to supplement my retirement. So, that's a big difference. Um, maybe, thir maybe 20 years ago, that I would have been like, nope, got to do this, got to do that because I need to make X amount. And right now, for me, I want the farm to be um, supplemental to my to my retirement, and so that's what I'm looking for. And I am, I you know, if you go do the math, have y'all ever really sat down and done the math? Like, if you want to make, I don't know, if you want to gross fifty thousand a year, and all you're doing is bouquets, y'all know how many bouquets that is. Do the math real quick. Just about fifty thousand by twenty five dollars, just on average. Y'all, that's a lot of bouquets. And if you're not, in it, and if you're somewhere that has a very short grow season, like here, we can pretty much grow darn near all twelve months of the year, um, in some shape or form. But if you have like a short, 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 and by short I mean like four or five months of grow season. Then divide that by divide that fifty thousand by that num get that number of, of bouquets and then divide that over like five months. Sweet mama, that's a lot of flowers, yeah. So I, that is another reason why you do have to have some different revenue streams if you're trying to achieve like a livable wage, um, that sort of thing. So think about that. Um, what else is ha what else do I have to say about that? I don't know. I feel like everybody's talking about it right now with the release of Lenny Larkin's book, which I did buy. Um, I've read, um, I've read, I'm almost through with it. I've, I've just been kind of taking my time with it. So, um, it reinforces some things that I've already known and I already know to do, um, because we do run, because Mr. Daydream has his own business. I have a degree in business. Um, but what it really has helped me do from a flower farming perspective is go look at the flowers. Like, I may be planting too much. I may be. And I'm going to rework some math on that on some of the, based on some of the numbers she put in there. Um, and it may be, a, I may be able to do something different. So, I don't know. It's been really good. Um, again, this is not sponsored by, by her or by anybody else. I just thought... You know, I'm all about sharing the resources. So, um, anything else that is happening? Y'all, I just feel like time is just like racing by. Y'all feel like that? It's already February. February. So, hmm, that's a pretty picture. Look how dark the screen just got. 
Okay. I may have to move the camera again. Oh, here we go. And we're back. <sighs> anyway. Um, all right, guys, I'm going to have to cut this. I'm going to have to cut this off now because Mr. Daydream just walked past the door and motioned for me to come on. So he needs my help out in the flower field, which I wasn't planning on, but you know, I'm gay. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Thank you so much for being here. Let's go grow some stuff.